Here's me earlier this year at Computex in Taiwan. Zero is the number. Zero means no cables. Zero means quiet. And zero is the aim of the game, which is why we're looking at MSI's Project Zero. And here it is, ladies and gents. We finally got it. Project Zero is here. Today we're taking a look at the brand new MSI B650M Project Zero. We're gonna do our usual thing. We're gonna take a look, see what makes this new motherboard tick. Look, I'm wearing the same shirt. What a coincidence. Come closer to me, baby. All right, before that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by VIPSEDKey.com. You install Windows and you see the watermark of death. You don't need to fork out a couple hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor. From VIPSEDKey.com for a tenth of the price and you can use our code GEAR to get 25% off. How good's that? That takes that already cheap Windows key and makes it even cheaper. You place your order, bingo bango, you've got your key on your orders page, you chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR for 25% off, link in the description. On with the video. Here it is, ladies and gents, the MSI B650M Project Zero. Let's do our usual thing. Let's get that motherboard out of the box so we can take a bit of a closer look at all the things that come with this new board from MSI. And to be honest, there isn't a whole lot here. First of all, we've got some documentation. This is pretty standard stuff. This is a quick install guide for helping you socket the CPU if you've never done it before, some regulatory stuff, and a warning sheet. So pretty standard documentation here. Next up, we've got a bunch of stickers. Now, these are great to label your cables. And this is just so you know what everything is when you're plugging it in, especially if you're plugging it in the back of your board now that with this Project Zero board. We've also got some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. And there's also antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. All right, let's unsheath the new B650M Project Zero and take a little bit of a closer look at this board because it is quite different to what you're used to seeing. On the bottom edge of the board, we've got the front panel connector for your lights and all your switches. We've got two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. Got USB 2.0 headers for things like RGB controllers or liquid coolers and that kind of stuff. We've also got two PWM fan headers. There's also two five volt three pin addressable RGB headers on the bottom of the board as well and the front panel audio header. We've got the 24 pin power connector. We've got a USB type C front panel header. There's a USB 3.2 type A header, and then two more SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. And I know this is a bit disorienting, but I've got text on screen to show you what edge of the board this is on. On the top edge of the board, there's two eight pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your CPU. There's another three pin five volt addressable RGB header and three more PWM fan headers. And as I mentioned, yes, I know it's a bit disorienting, but yeah, I'll help you guys understand this. For PCIe slots, there's two in total. There's one by 16 PCIe Gen 4 slot, and then there's a PCIe Gen 3 by one slot at the bottom of the board. For the VRM layout, you're looking at a 10 plus 2 plus 1 phase VRM setup with 80 amp power stages. And as you can see, the whole I.O. cover is a massive heatsink. There's a really large heatsink towards the top of the board as well for the top VRM layout. And again, that I.O. cover is just a heatsink to help dissipate all of that heat. The B650M Project Zero features a standard AM5 socket with standard cooler mounting. So there's nothing exotic going on here, even though all the connectors are on the back side of the board. And if we just pop that socket open, if you've never seen this before, we'll just do that to show you guys what it looks like. The AM5 socket is an LGA socket, and it's much like you'd see with Intel sockets. And the reason I'm showing this is because if you haven't seen this before, this is really good to know. As for RAM, the B650M Project Zero supports up to a total of 128 gigs of DDR5 memory, overclockable up to 7600 mega transfers. All right, let's take a look at the M.2 layout on this board. It has two M.2 slots in total, and both of the included M.2 slots are PCIe Gen 4x4. So 
pretty standard layout here. For rear I.O., we've got a display port, we've got HDMI, we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, some USB type A ports, there's 10 gig type A ports there as well, as well as two USB 2.0 type A ports. There's also some USB type C ports, there's one 20 gig type C port, there's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, and the audio interface with the microphone in, line out, and line in. But it's B-roll time. Drop that beat. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the MSI B650M Project Zero. I kind of made a promise to myself that I wouldn't do motherboard overviews unless it's something that was really worth talking about. At Computex earlier this year, we actually got to see this in person. In terms of the case and the motherboard, again, they're gonna be coming out in September this year. Do look forward to them. We're gonna be offering first up a white version of it, and then we're mulling, to toying around with the idea of having a black version as well. But as with those shows, a lot of what we see doesn't come to fruition, and a lot of it is just stuff that they show at trade shows to get people excited, but this is a real product that you can buy. Now, what makes this different to other motherboards as mentioned in the intro and throughout the video you've probably seen so far is the fact that all of the connectors, well, all of the main connectors are on the back side of the board. One thing I noticed is basically what they've done to achieve this is all of the connectors and all of the service mount stuff is all through hole components and all they've done is they've soldered the through hole connectors to the back side. Although doing that is not just as simple as putting the components on the back because some of the polarity needs to change for some of the things. So it can be a little bit different in terms of the motherboard design itself. But I mean, that's the gist of it, right? Flip the board over, desolder the through hole components, solder them on the back side and hope it works. But yeah, it's, it's actually not quite that simple. The design of this board is really nice as well. I pulled out my B650M motor Wi-Fi just to see if there were any similarities between the boards, but this is a whole new PCB design. I thought they would have just based it on another board that they had, but even little things like on the B650M motor Wi-Fi, the PCIe slot isn't in the first position, it's in the second position. It's also got another by 16 size slot at the bottom, whereas this one doesn't. This has only got two M.2 slots. So they've really tried to save on surface mount components to make it as sleek and elegant as possible. And I think this is a very interesting concept. We're actually seeing Asus do something similar and Gigabyte did something with their Project Stealth stuff two years ago. So I think this will probably become a bit of a trend. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Who's to say that it's actually gonna be a trend? But one thing I will say is with boards like this, you have to really be aware of the case that you're using because of those rear connectors. There's only a handful of cases now that support this motherboard. A bunch of them are made by MSI themselves. They've kind of jumped into making their own cases recently. One case this is compatible with, from as far as I can tell, is the Leon Lee Lancool 216. You know what? Let's grab a 216 and see what the deal is quickly. Scratch that. It's actually the 216R that's compatible. I've got a 216 and after just having a quick look, it's definitely not going to fit. So one of the cases that are compatible is the Lancool 216R. I'm guessing it's a new SKU that Leon Lee has made specifically for these boards with these rear connectors. As far as the pricing and availability of this board, I know the Australian pricing because I could find it. It was around about 430 Aussie dollars. We do have a build coming out with this. 
and we're reviewing one of the cases that this motherboard is compatible with because I thought it would be an interesting look at the future of motherboards with rear connectors. Unfortunately, MSI doesn't have power for the GPU coming through the motherboard, which would have been really, really cool. I think ASUS does that, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe so you can see that full review coming very, very soon. And that's just about gonna do it. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You definitely had a peek today and we definitely had a bit of a seek and watch a video like probably up here. Yep, I'm getting it right now. Yay, it's my right hand. Yeah, watch a video. It's probably about a motherboard or something. Well, it's the best video for you, right? It's a Gear Seekers video. Just subscribe. How many seconds have I killed now? Probably like eight.